the hairdressers. I um, got my hair cut a couple of weeks ago, but I decided I wanted it a little bit shorter, so the hairdresser is kindly going to cut a little bit more off of me. And we're recording this on our new Sony Action Cam. So exciting. My favorite bit is, is um, this kind of Inspector Gadget looking wristwatch thing that actually there's a screen where I can see a preview hopefully you can see it a preview of what I'm recording which is really cool just got back from ah, so I got my hair cut what do you think Let's see if I can I can show you the back yeah so just a little bit shorter um, right now we're at the Pierre Lachaise, Lachaise, not quite sure how to pronounce it, uh, cemetery, which is one of the most well-known attractions in Paris because of the famous people who are buried here. Um, we're just walking around now to try to find the tomb of Oscar Wilde. And as you can see, they've put a glass casing around the bottom because it became a tradition that people would come here and kiss the tomb with red lipstick and you can see that they've put a sign here asking you not to do so and that uh, and informing you that the cleaning fees are exclusively paid for by the family and asking you to refrain from doing it but if you come around this side you can actually see all the lipstick marks up there just above the glass and there's also one right on the lips as well so we're just coming up to the grave of the most visited resident in this cemetery and one of the most visited grave sites in the entire world and that's the grave of Jim Morrison Just the one there with the flowers and the, and the pictures on top. Of course, no visit to Paris would be complete without trying some macarons. And thanks to a lovely Parisian friend of ours who bought us this box yesterday, we had the chance to sample a whole, di a whole variety of them. There's a whole different variety of colors and flavors, and you know, some have things sprinkled on them. Others have, and I think this is my, these are my favorite ones, the ones with the metallic finish. I think they look really pretty. Um, this is the list of the different flavors that they have. So this one here is pistachio cherry, this is dark chocolate, bitter almond draguese, and apparently the draguese are the, just these small pieces of confectionery on top. Um, of course coffee, we have lemon ginger, poppy raspberry, milk chocolate passion fruit, and we tried this one yesterday and it's surprisingly good. I wouldn't have picked this for um, a fantastic combination, but it really does work well. This one is some kind of caramel, apricot, a thousand flowers, and this one I absolutely loved. I love the look of it first of all in the store because it's purple, which is my favorite color and it has a beautiful finish, the metallic finish, and I love the taste of it as well. It's, it's very, very nice. It, it tastes a bit like kind of like a berry, uh, berry flavor. We have vanilla and lemon. So those are all the different flavors. Which one do you think we should try next?
marché, tu vois, donc euh, ouais. Comme j'ai un balancement de bras qui est assez important. Euh, qui donne le départ Camille Allez. Moi, on y va. Tu chantes pas And you, you have, just, wow, you have to sing deux. it with us. Ok, Allez, show. Zéro, zéro. 3, 2, 1, 0. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux We're at the Pontesar footbridge, which is just by the Louvre, and this bridge has become well known in recent years as the Lovelock Bridge. As you can see behind me, it's completely covered in Lovelocks, uh, and this has been going on for about the past five years. The idea became popularized after an Italian novel, I believe, in which there's a scene where a lovelock is locked to a bridge in Paris, and the idea has really taken off since then. Uh, basically, the idea is that you lock a padlock to the bridge, often with your um, initials or, or a, a little note on there, um, and then you throw the key directly into the river Seine as a sign that you, your love can never be broken. There are three issues um, that have, a, have arisen um, because of this phenomenon. One is obviously the aesthetics of the bridge. Uh, this is not the only bridge to be affected in Paris. There's another bridge that's by the Notre Dame Cathedral that is also completely covered. There are also various other bridges around the city that are um, starting to get covered in, in padlocks as well. Uh, so a lot of local people don't actually like the don't actually like the fact that the um, the look of Paris is, is changing and these historic uh, views around the city are changing because of these of these love locks. The second is the structural integrity of the bridge. Um, you may not think that locking a padlock onto the bridge causes any damage, um, but collectively there's over 10 tons of padlocks on this bridge alone. Um, and this bridge was not designed to carry 10 tons of extra weight. Um, so there are concerns about um, the structural integrity of the bridge. And if you have been following the news on this bridge, you might know that a few months ago, a 2.4 meter section of the bridge actually fell in on itself uh, due to the weight of the padlocks on it. And since then, various sections of the bridge have had to be replaced. Um, you might see some grills that are not completely covered in love locks, but that's because they're very new and give it a few weeks and they'll be completely covered as well. The third thing is the, the pollution is causing to the river Seine by people throwing all of their keys um, directly into the river, which is um, obviously not a good thing either. So if you are coming here to Paris, we do really urge you to rethink locking a love lock onto the bridge or any bridges around Paris. Rethink other ways um, on how you can you know, mark your stay here without uh, damaging the bridges um, and making sure that they are here for future generations to come and enjoy too.